Hello everyone. We are now in lesson 3 today and we will talk about citizenship. I know that we are all familiar about the word citizen. So, before we start, I have something to ask first. Are you a citizen of the Philippines? Are you aware of the following values of modern Filipino? These are pananalig, katapatan, pag-aaruga, kasipagan, at tibay ng loob. With these following values, which do you possess right now? Just comment down your answer with your brief explanation. To start, here are our learning outcomes for today's lesson. Discuss the importance of good citizenship values and describe a good Filipino citizen. Here are the good citizenship value clusters. First is pagkamakajos. This includes faith in the Almighty, respect for life, order, work, and concern for the family and future generation. Next is pagkamakatao. This includes also about love, freedom, peace, truth, and justice. The third one is pagkamakabayan. It includes unity, equality, respect for law and government, patriotism, and promotion of the common good. And last is pagkamakakalikasan. It includes concern for the environment and environmental sanitation. As a Filipino citizen, it is important that we know these values and that these values must be visible to us. Let us give time to reflect on these good citizenship values. Our nation is in crisis. Our people are suffering. Let us stop being a part of the problem. Let us be part of the solution. Let us be good citizens by leaving the good citizenship values enshrined in the Constitution. So how to be a good Filipino citizen? There are desirable traits of the Filipino youth needed for national development, for most of which is love of country. Love of country is also patronizing Filipino cultural arts, products, and inventions, promoting and conserving the natural resources of the country. Love of country means serving the Philippines no matter how inadequate the returns are. Loving our country also is expressed by the love for the mother tongue, our native language, which is Filipino. How many of the Filipino youth dwell in enriching their language through reading, writing, and speaking? English is the international language in business, trade only industry, and diplomacy, and the youth should become not only proficient but also proud of the Filipino language. In short, we should be proud of what our country can offer and how unique our language is. The other desirable traits also in the Filipino youth needed in national development are continuous interest to learn, thrift industry, sense of service, perseverance inventiveness, honesty, personal discipline, respect, integrity, creativity or sense of responsibility, assertiveness, and sensitivity to the needs of others. These are some of the desirable traits that describe a good Filipino citizen. So what are the duties and obligations of being a Filipino citizen? First is to be loyal to the Republic. This means that have faith and confidence in the Republic and love for and devotion to the country. We have to be proud being Filipinos, respect our customs, traditions, language, and institutions because our country is considered our home, the home of our forefathers who fought for our country against the invaders, the home of our children and grandchildren, the seat of our affections, and the source of our happiness and well-being. 
It is our primary duty to be loyal to the Republic. Second is to defend the state. Considering the fact that our country is our home, it is our prime duty to love and defend the state at all costs, regardless of our creed, religious beliefs, and wisdom. Loving one's country can be shown not by words but by deeds. It should be a continuous flame of love, considering the fact that we receive benefits and protection from the state of which we are a part. In return, it is our primary and honorable duty to defend it against any peril, whether from within or from without. Third is to contribute to the development and welfare of the state. As a citizen, how can we contribute to the development and welfare of the state? We can do this in the form of paying our taxes willingly and promptly, by helping maintain peace and order, conserving natural resources, by patronizing local products and trade, and by engaging in productive work. Fourth is to uphold the Constitution and obey the laws. It is our prime obligation to uphold the Constitution and obey the laws. Because if the people would disregard them, our country would collapse and we will not have peace and order. Fifth is to cooperate with duly constituted authorities. In every organization, there is always a leader to manage the affairs of all the constituents. If the members will not cooperate, we can never expect to become successful in all the undertakings that our government would like to do for the good of its citizens. Sixth is to exercise rights responsibly and with due regard for the rights of others. No man is an island and we have to live with others. In the exercise of our rights, we have to see to it that we also respect the rights of other people. Because if we do this, we can expect harmonious relationship among members of the society. Seven is to engage in gainful work. If a man will not work, he shall not eat. From 2 Thessalonians verse 3 to 10. It is stated in the Bible that if we want to eat, we have to work. It is our obligation as citizens of our country to become productive by engaging in gainful work so that we can provide the basic needs of our family and ourselves as well. As cited by De Leon, the essence of life is work. Every citizen should bear in mind that only by hard and sustained work can men and nations live and survive. Last is to register and vote. It is our prime duty as citizens of the Philippines to register and vote. Suffrage is both a privilege and a duty, which every qualified citizen must perform. It is not sufficient to just register and vote but it is coupled with intellectual judgment. When we say intellectual judgment, it means you must be a smart voter. So how to be a smart voter? First is don't just vote with your guts only. You have to think deeply according to their qualification. Second is don't use social media as your sources in choosing candidates. Instead, do your own research. And last is, watch election debates without bias. We have to consider the different political issues presented by different candidates so that, at least, we can choose the best person to manage government affairs. And these are all the important duties and obligations of every citizen in a democratic society. Before we end, let me ask you this. Among all of those duties and obligations, what did you practice as a citizen? Still, comment down your answer. Take note, please read all the content of the Philippine Constitution of 1987 and familiarize the preamble. 
And that ends our lesson. Continue being a good citizen and build a peaceful and progressive nation. Thank you for your participation and see you again in our next discussion.